morning welcome back to the knitting expat podcast channel my name is mina and i'm here today to talk about tour de fleece and talk about um some fiber that i've purchased and it's all kind of interrelated um i've decided for tour de fleece this year i haven't um set up like an official team or anything i haven't joined any teams in particular um I just know this year July is going to be quite a busy month for us so I didn't want to um, make any big commitments or commit to hosting a team or anything like that this this year plus this is my very first tour the fleece so I kind of want to see how things go and next year if things go well this year I'll probably think about hosting a team or something but um, first of all what is tour de fleece if you are new and you don't know uh, if you're new here, welcome. Um, if you're new to spinning and you've never heard of Tour de Fleece, it is a spinning event. Um, I should probably clarify that. This is a spinning video, <laughs> specifically. I, um, this is, I feel like I'm all a bit jumbled up right now. Let's start over. Hi, <laughs> this is the Knitting Expert Podcast channel. I am a recent convert to spinning. I still absolutely love my knitting, but I do both now. And so this is a spinning focused video. If you're here for knitting, this probably isn't the video for you, but um, there, there, I've just uploaded a podcast, so you can go check that out on the channel. Um, but I'm here today, like I said, to talk about Tour de Fleece. So Tour de Fleece is an event that is, I believe, I can't remember, I believe it started years and years ago, um, over on Ravelry, um, where spinners, uh, will typically spin along with the cyclists who are cycling in the Tour de France. So it's a three week period and you spin, the idea is that you spin on the days that the cyclists are riding and they have, I think they have two rest days, so on those days you can have a rest day and not have, don't have to spin um, and they have like challenge days where I guess you're encouraged to do something that's a little bit more challenging, maybe trying a new fibre or something like that, something a little bit different. Um, but yeah, so I thought it'd be fun to take part. Like I said, I haven't actually done a whole lot of research into like some of the more specific rules and uh, things to do with Tour de Fleece. Um, I'm taking it pretty easy. I think the idea is basically to just set yourself a challenge or set yourself a goal of like maybe how much fiber you want to spin or how long you want to spin each day, whatever it is that you want to set for yourself. So, um, so yeah. And many fiber dyers or fiber artists who sell fiber for spinning um, they come up with um, I guess like packages or sets for like tour de fleece specifically I did actually purchase one so that's in this box here that I'm going to show you in a minute but um, some will just dye a tour de fleece themed braid or or fiber um, or like a bat or something and some put like a whole package together kind of like an advent calendar but specific to like tour de fleece anyway I've decided to take part this year like I said rather informally I'm not setting up a like a group like a thread sorry a team I will put up a thread in the Ravelry group the Knitting Expat podcast Ravelry group for anyone who does want to just chat about Tour de Fleece and share progress and stuff by all means go ahead and do that in the group I, like I said I will post a thread for that um, this video will probably go up on the 6th of July which is the first day of the Tour de Fleece it starts on Saturday 6th of July Today is actually Thursday the 4th, so happy Independence Day to um, any Americans out there. And, um, what was I saying? Yes, yeah, so it starts on the 6th of July. Can you tell I'm a little bit scattered today? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and it ends on the 28th, 27th of July. It's about, th it's three weeks long, I believe. It's 21 days. So, um, so yeah, I have purchased a few bits of fiber over the last few weeks and I wanted to share some of that with you. I was going to do this haul with my daughter actually with Layla the last time I did a fiber haul video um, you guys loved her input on it but um, there's a number of reasons why I'm not having her help me. One because there are some things that I just don't want her to open and get her hands into and two there just wasn't the right I don't have time to do it because I was going to do it this evening after she gets back from nursery but um, Perry and I, my husband and I, were going out to the cinema tonight, so it's gonna be a little bit hectic trying to get her to bed and get everything sorted before we have to go. So there's just not gonna be a lot of time to sit down and record a video with her. So unfortunately this time it's just me. And we're gonna do the haul first, and then I'm gonna to talk to you guys about my plans for Tour de Fleece and what my goals 
are for spinning during that time period. So, um, this is in no particular order of things that I've purchased. Actually, there's one here that I'm not gonna, I can I'll show it to you now as well, it's fine. Um, okay, so first up here, I placed an order, most of these bar, bar one, are fibers from um, companies that I've not tried before. So this is from Cat and Sparrow, they're a UK based um, company. All of these are actually UK based companies. And um, I picked up two braids from them, mainly because one of them actually, you'll see from the colors, not my usual, not what I normally would go for. Um, there again, if you've been here for a while, you'll know my color palette is usually saturated, dual tones, and I'm not a huge fan of pink or pastels. So this is very much completely out of that comfort zone. It is both pastel and has a fair amount of pink in it. However, the uh, blend is something really interesting that I've never tried before. It's 60% al alpaca, 20% sea cell, and 20% silk. And the color is Zen Garden. And I'm trying to put, push myself slightly outside of my comfort zone a little, more, a little bit more often. Um, so I, I do find that I'm attracted to a lot of the same colours and the thing is a lot of the colours in this I do like. I like greens and I like purples which and greys which are definitely in here. The pink is the bit that's outside of my comfort zone but it's not so dominant in the, in the braid that I feel like it will overtake in the whole skein. So I'm interested to see how this will spin up and this will um, this will be a fun experiment. Like I said, it's, it looks really small, but it is 100 grams, so it's quite a dense, the fiber's quite dense, and it's just so soft. So I'm interested to see how this will spin up. And the other one that I got, up, got from them, which is, again is a blend that I haven't come across before, but was really intrigued by, was this 70% um, Superfine Alpaca, 30% Polworth. So it has that soft, I mean, Polworth is also really soft, but it has that like alpaca softness, which is, I think is very different but it also has some bounce to it from the Polworth. And this colorway is called the Map of Love, which again, is slightly more pastel than I would normally go for, but a bit more within my color range of um, colors that I would normally pick out. Definitely more like brighter colors. And even with the pink in there, I actually quite like it in this braid because I feel like it goes really well with the other colors. So these were from Cat and Sparrow in the UK. And, uh, and yeah, really lovely fibers. And again, like I said, I, I tried to go for blends and things that I hadn't had experience with before to kind of broaden my horizons as it were. Then I um, was on the Hilltop Cloud website and I really love Katie, Katie from Hilltop Cloud. I really love her fibers. They're really beautiful to spin. They're beautifully prepped. The colors are amazing. And she does this, um, these sets called um, ingredient boxes or ingredient sets. Mine didn't come in a box because I ordered other things. So for shipping purposes, it made more sense to just put it in a bag. But so I picked up this ingredients box. So these are meant for people who, I guess, do some level of fiber prep, though they have some fiber prep tools, like I have a blending board. So these are little like samples of different fibers and ingredients, I guess, that you can add into like bats or rolags or um, whatever else that you're preparing, fibers that you're preparing. So this is the Still Waters set. I'm not gonna open it up completely, but you get the idea. Even with the glare, there we go. You can see that better there. So there's 40 grams of viscose in two colors. There's 40 grams of hemp in two different colors. I think these ones are, are the hemp. There's uh, 40 grams of Raimi in two different colors and 20 grams of silk throaster's waste, which are these top two, so it's in two different colors. So it's two different colors of each of the different fiber types. And these are great as like little add-ins and extras that add texture and like different uh, colors and stuff into your fiber prep. So these will be really fun to play around with and add in to um, my fibers when I'm making Rolags on my blending board or even like little mini bags as well. So that's really fun and like I said I wanted to get one of these for a while and she finally had some in stock so I jumped on it and the other thing that she'd added that had been added to her shop which I hadn't seen before was a yak down sampler I've never tried yak down and this sounded so interesting to me and I will take this one out of the bag because it's quite dark and you can't really see it through the plastic but it's 140 grams so this 70 grams of undyed 
Yak in its natural sort of brown color, which is this one. Oh, it's so soft. This is just beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's just 70 grams of undyed yak down top. And then there's another 70 grams of dyed. And these are in little 10 gram bundles in different colors. Kind of like a really dark, moody rainbow gradient. These are just stunning and so soft. So soft. And yeah, so I'm really excited to see what these will grow up to be. I have no idea how I want to spin this yet. Do I want to spin like one ply, one ply, ply together? Do I want to blend them together? I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. I think what I might do is take a small bit of the brown and just sample it and see how it spins to decide whether I want to keep it on its own or if I want to blend it with another fiber because it might be a case that I, at this stage of my spinning experience, I might find it too tricky to just spin straight yak down on its own because I can't imagine the staple length is particularly long. No, these are like tiny staples. I'm not sure if you see that. It's like an inch and a half, two inches really really short staple lengths so yeah I, I may end up blending these with other fibers um, just to make it easier to spin but I haven't figured that part out yet either way I'm really excited to have this and to have an opportunity to play around with it and the last thing in the same vein of playing around and trying new things again this is kind of what I had in mind when I was uh, thinking about Tour de Fleece as well because I wanted to pick out some things to play around with um, that are just a bit different than what I've used in the past. And I also got this from Hilltop Cloud, it is one of her uh, camelid samplers. So camelid is a reference to um, a group of animals that come from like similar sort of family. So alpacas, llamas, um, camels are, um, are, from the, are, are basically the camelid uh, animals that produce those fibers. So I have, and these are all in the same colorway, in the berry, yeah, berry colorway. So I have 20 grams of camel, 20 grams of each. So there's 20 grams of camel, um, 20 grams of llama, 20 grams of um, hua, huakaya alpaca. I have no idea how to pronounce this, but this is the more common alpaca fiber that you will come across in yarn and in um, fiber form. And then there's also 20 grams of Suri alpaca. And Suri, Suri alpaca have really long, lustrous um, fiber. Uh, their locks are quite long and lustrous. So it, um, so yeah, that is very different to the other kind of alpaca. So I have 80 grams in total, 20 grams of each. I have a feeling these I'm definitely gonna probably, I'm definitely probably <laughs> words um, I am most likely going to be blending with other fibers to sort of play around with but this might be one of the fibers that I um, this might be one of the sets that I play around with on like one of those challenge days if not the whole lot maybe one or two of them blending it with something else and spinning it up to see what I can make with it so I think this might be one that I use on a challenge day or I, I might not even get to it this tour de fleece who knows um, but like I said I have a lot of I've built up a lot of fiber in my stash already so when I was looking to purchase some things to sort of round it out round out the fibers that I already have I wanted to get things like I said that I haven't tried before that sort of complement things I already have that I can blend and play around with and so I, I sort of feel like this order with Hilltop Cloud really fulfilled that side of things um, and then next up I'm going to show this was actually a package that was sent to me um, for the spin and make along so it was a little uh, there's also a little gift in there for me which was really sweet from the dyer so this is this is from pixie yarns or oh, sorry pixie yarn on Etsy she's also based out of the UK and uh, Sophie who's the dyer behind pixie yarn kind enough when I announced that we were doing the spin and make along she got in touch to ask if she could send some fiber as a prize. And I said, absolutely. And she um, she dyed some fiber for the spin and make along, which is so generous of her. So there are these two braids that she sent along. 
So this green one, beautiful green tonal braid, is 70% merino, 30% silk, 100 grams. Um, they don't have colorway names on them, but it's this beautiful sort of green. And the other one is a 70% Shetland, 30% silk top and these sort of like beautiful like pinks and blues this kind of reminds me of those sort of like unicorn drinks that have been really popular recently um so these two braids are going to be uh prizes for the spin and make along so if you are taking part in that you have a chance to win these they'll be i think that i'll have them as separate prizes but anyway um and then she also included some little row lights that she'd made up on her blending board for me to play around with so I'm really excited to spin these uh, they're beautiful colours and there's some sparkle in there as well I'm not sure if you can see that on camera but um, but yeah really excited to play around with those so thank you so much for those um, oh that's just her note I <laughs> don't want to lose that and okay so the final thing that I ordered was from um, let's grab this out. It was from Crafty Cat Knitty Bits on Etsy. She's also UK based. I can pull this out. It looks like a fairly big order, and I guess it kind of was. But this included um, a Tour de Fleece pack. I guess she calls it the Tour de Fleece 2019 Crafty Cat Team Fiber Pack. Quite wordy. I will get that to that in a second. But one of the things that I ordered was this braid. This is a 100 gram braid of a Corydale dyed in this beautiful gradient. So it's dyed on a white Corydale. There was an option to have this, but dyed on a gray Corydale base. And I almost went for that one, but I decided to go for this one in the end. I sort of chickened out of getting the darker moody rainbow and going for the brighter one. Um, but yeah, this is really interesting, really fun. And with this braid came a tutorial for how to spin a fractal, uh, how to spin a fractal yarn with it. I really have an idea of how to do that. And um, reading through it, I was glad to know that my understanding of how to do a fractal yarn, um, a fractal spin was actually correct. So that's nice um, to know that I was on the right tracks with what I was doing. So that was the first braid. And this I'd had in my cart for a while. So when I was getting the Tour de Fleece pack, I decided to go ahead and get this one as well. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to spinning this one during Tour de Fleece, um, but you'll see why. <laughs> so the set that I got from Crafty Cat for Tour de Fleece was a, like I said, like a whole bundle of stuff. Uh, so the main thing is you get 150 grams of fiber in two braids. So this one is the main Tour de Fleece color. Um, let me see, which side can I pull out to show you the braid properly? There we go. Really fun sort of multicolors with the purples and yellows and like, different tones of purple and oranges and reds, just really lovely warm colors. And I absolutely love, love this kind of braid. And this is on, what fiber is it? It's Falkland. It's a Falkland Island, Falkland, sorry, Falkland wool, which is actually a kind of merino, I guess. Um, and then there's also a 50 gram braid um, of a Finnish yarn in this sort of like end to end gradient. And I think this would be really fun to do um, like a fractal with this one. So that's why I probably won't use the other one. I might just do a fractal with this. I think it might be quite fun. Um, I haven't decided how I'm gonna spin this one yet. I might not do a fractal, but um, but yeah, really, really cute little 50 gram braid. So those are the main fibers. And then she also included, this is the bit that I said is a bit like an advent calendar, but the Tour de Fleece. So <laughs> there's some little um, kitty treats, which the boys haven't figured out yet. So I'm gonna save this for later. Oh, there's some catnip in here. Mm. Boys will love that. So yeah, it's a little treats from her cat to my cats. There's a challenge day package. There's a mystery fiber package, which I guess is for another challenge day. There's a rest day one and a rest day two package as well, because there are two rest days during Tour de Fleece. So 
So I actually need to figure out what those days are and which are the challenge days so I can put them in my calendar and know which days I'm supposed to open these on. But, um, but yeah, so I just thought it was really fun to take part. And even though I may not be like officially joining a team, just to sort of take part and have fun and um, join in with the rest of the community. Um, okay. I'm just going to take a quick break, rearrange the table a little bit because I'm kind of surrounded by stuff now and um, come back and talk to you about my um, goals, ambitions, challenges for myself for Tour de Fleece and, um, and yeah, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so while I was <laughs> rearranging and sorting out stuff, the doorbell rang and the postman came with another package and this I also know is fibre because um, this is the last thing I was waiting on. Grace from Babbles Travel Yarns, who is also the co-host of the Spin and Make Along with me. She recently uh, bended at Woolen in Dublin, which is a yarn festival over in Ireland. And uh, she had her post-show update and she had her fiber update last week. I believe it was about a week ago, yes. And I went on and ordered a braid of her fiber because I just have to. I have to support my friend. And um, and yeah, I really wanted to try some of her hand eye fiber. So that's what I did. And it just arrived literally just now. So perfect timing for this video. I'm just gonna go ahead and open that. Cute. With a little green wrapping paper, tissue paper. totally spoiled me. So sweet. She included a little extra treat, an extra braid for me that I did not order. So she totally didn't have to. I, this is the one that I ordered. Oh, hello Derek, can you come to say hi? Hello, did you smell the catnip? I think you smelled the catnip from when I opened that package earlier. This one, this cat of mine, we have two cats, uh, Hugo and Derek. Derek in particular is a fiend for catnip. Like he is obsessed. It's the only reason he would have come over right now is because he smelled something. Hey buddy. He's like, just like sticking his head in my fiber, sniffing around, trying to find it. Hey, what are you looking for? And if you can hear is like little sniffling and hey can you come say hi say hello are you a good boy you're so fluffy okay anyway so this is oh be careful so this was the braid that i purchased from grace you know what? i'm just gonna open it this is the poison apple color on her corridor fiber Derek, don't touch the tripod. Really beautiful greens and reds. Just, just really lovely, really squishy Corydell. And she sent me this as a little extra just because, and this is her 80% BFL 20% silk in the Half Moon Bay. And this actually, I almost purchased this one as well. It was in my cart, but I ended up deciding to go with the Corydell. So thank you for this little extra treat, Grace. I think she's, oh, she's taped it down. Okay, I'm not gonna open this now, but really beautiful blues and greens. And this is a gradient, so this would be amazing in a fractal. And that might be what I do with this. Okay, so that little um, <laughs> postman interruption aside, we will move on to my plans for Tour the Fleece. So the main thing is going to be spinning this, um, this Tour the Fleece pack from Crafty Cat Nitty Bits. Am I getting the name of the company right? Crafty Cat, Crafty Cat. I'm just gonna say Crafty Cat. And I was just, when I was looking at this braid, it reminded me of another braid that I have that looks very familiar. This one. It's a darker version. It's, it's definitely a lot darker than the one from Crafty Cat. But as you can see, they are very similar sort of colours. I feel like they would go work well together. Obviously, the Crafty Cat one's a lot lighter. 
than the than this one. This one is a 100% non-soup wash and merino um, dyed by my fibre share partner, but I actually purchased this braid from her, um, Lou. And I think what I might end up doing is either trying like a combo draft, because I've never done that before, and I think that would be quite fun to work on. So one's merino and the other one is Falkland. So I think their staple lengths are gonna be somewhat similar. And I think it'd be quite fun to to do that. Obviously the merino looks way puffier than the Falkland does in the braids at the moment. But I feel like it'd be quite fun to try out a combo draft. I've never done combo draft before. So I think that'd be an interesting um, spin to do. So that's gonna be the main thing. And then obviously the finish, the 50 gram braid here as well, the finish yarn uh, fiber which I will also spin. Um, got buzzy bits around my mouth. The other Tour de Fleece sort of fiber pack that I purchased, which I didn't realize was a Tour de Fleece sort of uh, set, was the Zinnia Garden um, pack from Spin Giants, another fiber dye that I absolutely love her fiber and the way she preps it. Um, so I have this little set, which I haven't decided whether I want to turn into like Rainbow Rolags or spin each one on its own. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna pair it with this gray fiber from uh, Weft Blown. I picked this up at Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and this is a Shetland wool and Tussle silk top, just in a natural gray. Um, so I think these would work quite well together. This one is a merino mulberry silk, so both have some silk in it. I think they would go quite well together. Again, not sure if I'm gonna like ply them together or ply them separately and then use them together in the project. Haven't fully formed that idea, but this was the other Tour de Fleece project that I had in mind, mainly because it was a Tour de Fleece specific purchase, if that makes sense, um, without realizing it was Tour de Fleece specific. I don't know if I'm making sense anymore. Then the other, plan I have for Tour de Fleece is this set of Rolags. I actually made up these Rolags yesterday. I spun this little sample a while ago, which I would have talked about on the podcast at some point, um, these rainbow Rolags. So it's carded Corydell Slivers from World of Wool that I turned into Rolags and added in some um, Mulberry Silk Neps. Um, Silk moil, sorry, that's the word, silk moil neps. They kind of look like neps in the finished yarn. And I really like how this turned out. So I've made up more of the Rolex and I'm gonna spin them up and turn it into some kind of project. Now the idea I have is I'm gonna spin these woolen, uh, so long draw or supported long draw more likely. And I will do a video about it because I've had some people ask about that. And I had a little bit of fiber left over when I was preparing um, that I just made these cute little baby Rolex with and I'll probably use these for the demo for doing the long draw and actually like talking through the process of how I do it um, and then I'll probably do this as like a separate video where you can see the process of me spinning this up and then the idea the project that I had in mind for it I don't have a specific project in mind but I'm thinking that I'm going to do a um, color work project and use this for the color work and then use like a gray for the background color. I think it would look so fun with these colors. Um, it's not super like next to the skin soft because Corydale's a little bit on the scratchier side, um, this particular Corydale. So I'm thinking something more like an accessory rather than necessarily next to skin. Um, or maybe for like a color work cowl, I think it would look quite cool. Um, anyway, I think there are loads of options for what this could become. There's a lot of fiber in here. I think in total with the, the skin I've already spun up there's about 190 grams of fiber total in here so plenty to make something with i'm hoping to get like a dk worsted weight which is kind of what this one has turned out to be so if i can match that gauge with the rest of the fiber then it'll be nice and cohesive and um yeah i'm really excited about this one this one is really quite special as you can tell i clearly have like a color theme going on which is just bright and colorful um so those are my main goals for Tour de Fleece, I think. Um, I feel like that's plenty, that's a lot of fiber right there. Um, those are my main goals. Other things that I would like to, to do is I would like to play around with this Camelid sampler from um, Hilltop Cloud with the different um, 
fibers there and playing around with blending those maybe and doing something. I also have this this skein from this braid rather from Cat and Sparrow in the alpaca sea cell silk which I showed you earlier which I'm really interested to see how this spins up so I might play around with this and um, I have some other Rolags that I have prepped there's this set that I've prepped that I really want to spin ignore the label I'm just reusing the bag that I really want to spin that goes with this um, I mean it's not supposed to they just I just happen to have these fibers that went with these colors in, the, in this mini skein set and I made up these Rolags Kind of match them so i'm planning a project with these together um and i have some other row legs that i've made up that i want to spin so those are kind of like if i have the time i will get to those at some point but these ones here in front of me are my main for the fleece um goals or like aims i guess and uh, we will see how much of it i get done like i said i'm not putting like, a huge amount of pressure on myself to make sure i spin X number of yards or X number of hours or X number of like grams of fiber or anything like that. But I think in front of me here, I have like what, 190, 140, uh, maths, three, uh, 330, is that right? 330, 380, 580, 680, 680 grams. Plus there's some little fiber bits in there, probably like 700 grams of fiber to spend here for just the tour de fleece stuff that I've picked out plus like there's extras that I've set out as well that I might spend so that's that's a lot of that's a lot that's over a pound of uh fiber already it's almost two pounds of fiber um I feel like if I can get through the 700 grams that I've set out for myself I'd be quite happy with that like I said I have a really busy few weeks coming up this July I also am not going to have um so I'm not gonna have I will have time to spend but I also have a lot of knitting that I need to get done for work like design work that I need to get through so um, you know I'm not gonna be able to dedicate as much time to spinning as I might have liked to during Tour de Fleece also Tour de Fleece starts on Saturday and I'm away this weekend <laughs> so there's um, I'm not actually gonna be able to spin for the first couple of days of Tour de Fleece so there's that too but what I might do and this might be quite fun actually I might take these two braids with me and do the prep whilst I'm away this weekend. I'm going up to my parents uh, this weekend and um, there's a few things going on. If you watch the podcast, you'll have heard about it, but I might take these two braids up with me to my parents this weekend and in the evenings after the lady's gone to bed, um, I could do some prep if I'm not knitting or once I get to when I'm too tired to knit, I can do some fibre prep. Maybe that's a good idea. Then I can still do something Tour de Fleece related without, um, without my spinning wheel <laughs> there we go words and the final thing i wanted to say and this is kind of like the first video i guess for this series is i'm thinking i'm i th so i'm thinking i'm planning on doing like a tour de fleece vlog series so this is kind of the first one even though it's not really a vlog but i'm thinking of doing like a weekly vlog so um vlogging during the week or vlogging each week little snippets here and there when i'm spinning and um uploading a video at the end of each week um, during Tour de Fleece, so there'll be three vlogs, I guess, during that time. Um, I might do other vlogs in that period, not necessarily spinning related, like if we have really nice family days out planned or if we're doing something interesting that I think would be nice to vlog, then I'll do that separately, but I'm thinking of just doing like spinning specific vlogs throughout the week. Then on top of that, like this one in particular, I'm planning on doing a video for this, um, like separately and um, so I think that would be quite interesting on its own kind of like a learn how to do supported long draw type of spinning video and then the rest of the stuff will be shown during the spinning vlog so there won't be like specific dedicated videos for how I spun this it will just be part of the tour de fleece vlogs as it were and then at the very end I'll do like a little roundup video of everything that I managed to spin during tour de fleece does that make sense sound like a good idea <laughs> anyway um let me know what you think um i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it interesting i will link all the um places that i purchased fiber from that i showed you in this video below this video if there's anything i've missed or anything you have questions about feel free to let me know i will also try and remember to link the thread in the ravelry group for tour de fleece as well and i'll also link the spin and make along thread and um i'm trying to think what else other information there is to give you um, 
I think that pretty much covers it to be honest I feel like this has become a much longer video than I intended and um, I hope you guys aren't bored if you're still watching then congratulations you've made it to the end um, right I better get going thank you so much for joining me today and um, I hope you have a great tour de fleece see you again soon take care bye